Hey everybody. Ooh. Okay, start. Hey everybody. Um, welcome to I guess our fourth video on the advanced course. Uh, we're going to be focusing on colors and shading. Uh, colors we're going to be focusing on, or kind of briefly going over, is warm and cold colors, along with desaturated and saturated colors, and which colors you should actually use. Uh, the shading that we're going to be doing today for our, I guess, practice is cell shading. So that should be quite interesting. Um, I guess we'll get right into it. So, main thing I want to I guess, focus on is desaturated and saturated colors. Uh, with saturated colors, you can see, you know, right here, they are really, really bright. They're very in-your-face sort of colors. Um, while on the other side, you know, it's kind of mute, not as, you know, in-your-face. And what you can tell from both of these, obviously, is that they're still the same colors. Still red, still yellow, and still blue. Uh, usually, uh, and I guess here's an example of where the colors are used. Uh, usually what you want to do is actually just use desaturated colors. Um, not always, you know, this kind of tone. It can still be a little bit more, I guess, bold. But for the most part, you won't really use the all the way most saturated colors. And, you know, this is more for uh, if you ever happen to do art digitally. Uh, for markers and colored pencils, most of the time this really isn't the case. Uh, you won't really end up with colors this strong and this in your face. Uh, but if you ever, I guess, go beyond that, or sometimes, I guess, there could also possibly be a marker that's really, really strong, um, I would really recommend not using that in every single case, just because, um, and it's distracting, and you'll make a wonderful drawing, and it'll get completely you know, distracted from by these really bold and bright colors. So that's, I guess, a mini uh, lesson on desaturated and saturated colors. Uh, the next thing that I, I like to talk about is warm and cold colors. Uh, warm colors are typically the red, orange, yellow, and green, while colder colors are the teal, blue, purple, and pink. Um, I like to differentiate between these two because usually you won't want to mix too much with your drawings. Um, I mean that by saying, you know, you won't want to mix a lot of warms and then have a lot of colds and kind of go back and forth. Uh, especially when shading, it can be really distracting to the eyes in the end. Uh, usually while you're coloring it, it won't seem like that much of an issue. Um, of course, there's exceptions and a lot of it is just practicing and seeing the end result and seeing if it works out. Um, otherwise, you know, if you don't practice, you won't know what's wrong and you won't be able to improve. But just in a general sense, you won't want to use too many warm or I guess dip back and forth between the two. For shading, cell shading, um, I like to have this thing called, or not necessarily, I haven't given it a name, um, but I like this saying, warm colors go left and cold colors go right. What I mean by this is that warm colors, uh, for example, I guess you can look at this yellow over here. This warm color, when you're looking for a darker, I guess, shadow color over it, you'll want to go left on the spectrum. And the bar that's right next to the yellow square is orange. So as you get darker, you'll be looking for, you know, in this one you have a mix between the two, like right, I would say right about here, right about here um, a darker yellow that's drifting towards orange. And when you finally get to, I guess, the darkest shade here, it's a very dark orange color. Um, so you go from bright to dark. But you also want to go from yellow to orange here. And that's what gives it this nice gradient color. Um, for the other case, you know, cold goes right. We have a, you know, nice strong blue right here. So we'll go from the blue and we'll go towards the right. In this case, you won't really want to go to, I guess, such a vibrant purple color. You'll maybe want to stick, I guess, right around here for your darkest shades. Uh, just because when you kind of shift over to like purples and pinks uh, the dark shadow doesn't really end up looking like a shadow it just ends up like a blob um, on paper so you'll go from a bright blue to a darker color um, and a blue from a or from a blue to a I guess darker purple blue color um, that's what makes again for both of these a really nice gradient that kind of 
I guess, can on a drawing represent a shadow. Uh, with that in mind, and again, you know, feel free to go back if you need to and kind of review what we've learned. Definitely would recommend also doing a little bit of your own research if possible, because a lot of this is, you know, looking, or at least for me, how I learned, a lot of it is looking at things, looking up things, and definitely 100% a lot of practice. Practice, I hate to say it, but practice is what really, you know, makes or breaks some things. So, with that aside, um, I already have picked out some test colors just to avoid I guess, any waiting, uh, and I already have my base background down here. So I colored in I guess, this fox or uh, dog animal, don't really know specifically uh, what I tried to make, but here it is. Um, definitely before coloring in, feel free to pause the video beforehand if you want to draw uh, what I have on my screen, or if you want to do something completely different with different colors, feel free to do that. Uh, this is just kind of an extra review for how to do the cell shading. Um, definitely gives you an idea of how it looks on a drawing. So we have definitely a warm color here, another warm color here, a cold color, and a cold sky color that we really won't touch. So we're not going to touch this. Um, at the moment. You could add clouds as well. The clouds would uh, typically be white, but it can be any color that you want them to be. So we have warm colors here, these two, and these are the two that we'll focus on first. So warm colors go left, meaning that we have an orange color here, and the next color that's, I guess, the color left of orange is red. So we'll, I guess, already have the shaded colors here. Um, let me pull that up real quick. These are, you know, this is a warmer reddish orange color. And it's a little bit darker, not super dark, but at least a little bit darker than the orange tone here. And it represents a shadow. Again, this is more, I would classify it again as orange. It's a very, you know, dark, muddied orange color. Um, and we want to look towards red because it's a warm color as well. So you'll go for an even darker reddish color to make it stand out. Um, you can see from here, cold went the opposite. You went from green towards, oh, actually, sorry. Here, here's the case where uh, things can get a little bit, I guess, odd. This grass is a actually a cold color, despite it being on the warm side, which goes to show just a, you need to, I guess, experiment around and kind of figure out, well, hey, this is not really a cold green. Um, I would, I guess, classify a colder green as looking something like this color right here. This is more of a colder green, and you would go for a colder shadow such as this. Uh, but we don't have that in this case. We actually have a warm green, which is one of the outliers. And so because it's warm, we're actually, or because it should be on the warm side, but it's actually cold, uh, we're going to be going towards the blue, but a very, very, very slightly going over to the blue side, but have it be a darker color. So this is where the case where the green actually would go over here. Again, a lot of it is just figuring it out. Um, definitely practice with color pencils. I would definitely recommend that at home or markers um, and get a sense of, you know, what colors go with what, uh, because a lot of it isn't straight away until you start it's playing around with it. Now you'll see from just even picking out these colors that there's a somewhat of a method of how you'll put the colors down on the uh, drawing. So I already kind of drew out how a sun would be in the distance and the idea is is that if there's an object covering something that object that is being covered will then have a shadow because the light cannot hit it. So an example, the head is over, I guess it's not really shown here, but it's over the neck area. So the neck therefore would be kind of covered with shadow because the neck isn't, you know, being shown by the sun. Um, I guess the little fold, the eyeball, if, it, if you think of it as bulging out a little bit, would cover a little bit of the, I guess, fur here. Um, this, I guess, is a little bit of an outlier. This is more of a, a style thing that I like to do. Um, it's really a personal choice where you have, I guess, the snout in between 
have a little bit of blush or something like that. Um, again, in this case here, leg is covering the body. And so you would make a little bit of shade because the body that is being covered by the leg is not being put into the sunlight. Same with the tail, same with a little bit of the fluff here. And then this part here, where you have kind of the edge of the head, um, the object obviously shouldn't, or if you really want it to be, it can, but for the most part, it wouldn't really be a flat, you know, if you look at this character drawing, it wouldn't be a flat character. Uh, to put dimension into it, as you get further away from the sun, and since the character's head is supposed to be round, uh, you get a little bit of shadow as the head rounds around and you start hitting the back of the head, where you have, of course it's not shown in the drawing, but you have the back of the fox's head, which would be, for the most part, um, in shadow. Again, with the case of the grass, this is a, you know, considered a cold green, so it's different with the shading. Um, but you would, of course, have the character kind of occupying a certain area of the ground, so that part of the ground that it's covering is not going to get any sunlight, hence why you have kind of this blocky shadow underneath it. Um, for, I guess for the most part with cell shading, it's not supposed to be like super gradient or anything, or not super as fancy with that sort of thing, but the whole idea of this lesson in cell shading in general is to get an idea of what colors you're supposed to use. So when you get more advanced with that kind of stuff, then you can, you know, experiment with gradients and how, you know, if it fades off, how does it look? Does it look good? Is it something that you want to continue to do? Again, intuitive, um, but definitely, definitely with practice, we'll find what you like and what you don't like, and you'll improve greatly from it. So I guess that was my mini tutorial lesson on cell shading, desaturated, saturated colors. You'll want to stick to the desaturated colors for the most part, um, and a kind of brief touch with warm and cold colors. Um, I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, definitely go back if you feel like you've missed something or if you want to practice more, I definitely recommend that. That would be really good. Um, but I, I'll see you in the next video or the final video that is. All right, have fun.